Hi guys, it's Hatchel Winner. How's everyone doing? Good, good, good. I hope today I am reviewing another Amouage fragrance. I've not done one for quite a while and I was sent a decant of this one by the lovely Peter. Thank you for sending me this, Peter Kokoran. I do have some things almost ready to package up and send to you, so thank you. This one is Love Tuberose by Amouage. It's the third instalment in their Secret Garden collection and they've created uh, four. They've just announced a fourth one which is called Love Mimosa. Literally, I just saw it on Fragrance Card the other day. So they've created a, a collection called Secret Garden. These are all obviously centred around flowers. They did Lilac Love first, then they did Blossom Love. Now they've done Love Tuberose. I don't know why they switched the love around. Why not just call it Tuberose Love? I don't know what happened there. Amouage? What's going on? And the next one's called Mimosa Love or Love Mimosa. So. They move the love around quite a bit. Spreading the love, we'll call it. We're calling it spreading the love today. So just a little bit about the line. I'm personally a fan of Amouage's main line, I guess you could call it. You know, things like Uber, Lyric, Interlude, those kind of things. I like the Omani, Middle Eastern opulence and really complex compositions that they make. This line seemed to me like they're trying to appeal more to a mass market. All of these seem very approachable and a little bit more stripped back because some Amouage fragrances have note lists as long as your arm. Maybe you've got a short arm, I don't know. But they have very long note lists, okay? So of course I wanted to smell the tuberose offering because I love tuberoses, I consider myself a tuberose hunter. And let me give you the notes. This one came out in 2018, so the 2019 release is the yellow, it's a new yellow mimosa one, which I will smell eventually. So the top notes are a triple white floral thing. You have jasmine, gardenia, and tuberose, of course. The heart notes are whipped cream and vanilla, and the base notes are cedarwood and sandalwood. So it's a super simple composition. And that's not like Amouage at all. Sometimes when I read the note lists out for them, I'm going on for 20 minutes and it's just still happening and it's still going on. But like I said, these are more approachable. They're meant to be, I think, for a wider audience. Amouage create opulent Middle Eastern style fragrances and these are kind of friendly and nice. So anyway, how does it smell? I'm just going to spray it wet on this hand. But what they've done here essentially is they've created a white floral gourmand, which to me, it, you don't really see that very often. They've put white flowers in a dessert-like setting. It's almost like white flowers dripping in cream. So at first is the most interesting point of the fragrance, I think. I want to mention gardenia because gardenia in fragrances to me often isn't real gardenia. Usually it's gardenia parading as something else or something else parading as gardenia. Sometimes it's a combination of other white flowers to bring forward the facets of gardenia, or it can, they use sometimes things called jasminoids. It's a weird thing. Gardenia is a very expensive ingredient, so when it's in a fragrance, usually it's not real. And I'm still battling with myself with this one to figure out, is it real or not? If it isn't, they've done a very good job because this does contain the lusciousness that Gardenia gives. So, of course, it's a white floral opening. Tuberose mainly, Gardenia, and then you have Jasmine, which I think is probably the least f biggest factor of the floral part of this fragrance. Talking about Gardenia and Tuberose together, they're closely related to my nose, but Gardenia is so much more luscious, it's more creamy, where Tuberose is they're both very heady but tuberose to me is greener and it's a bit dirtier and it's a little bit more challenging to wear and i definitely do smell both if it's not real gardenia they've done a very good job of creating a gardenia accord so tuberose gardenia straight away heady just beautifulness of white flowers it's really cool what's immediately apparent in the background is the gourmand element of this and when i say gourmand don't let it make you think that it's going to be cupcakey, syrupy, sweet, horrible, overbearing gourmand, because it isn't. What they've got down really well in this one is the element of cream. 
This definitely is the creamiest white floral I've ever smelled. I don't know what they've done to do that. It must be some kind of molecule somewhere along the line, but this is white florals sitting on or even dripping in single cream or whipped cream without being super cloying, and I like that. The gourmand element isn't so much that it overtakes the white flowers. Not many things can overtake white flowers, to be honest, because they're pretty beastly when they want to be, and that's why I like them. But it feels kind of balanced. I can feel the greenery of tuberose in here, and I can feel the lusciousness of gardenia, and the gourmand elements are at the back side of it, just kind of waiting to come forward and make itself known, make themselves known, I should say. But, yeah. It's it's not my favourite tuberose I've ever smelled. Sometimes I feel like I'm disappointed by it. I think there are other tuberoses that do the job well and Amouage could bring their price down on this line in particular. I mean, they're quite pricey perfumes, you know, admittedly. I just think maybe this line should be, because of the way they smell and the compositions, I think they should maybe be just a little bit cheaper. That's just my two cents worth on the entire matter of the Secret Garden line. So you have all of this going on for a good hour, I think, maybe sometimes hour and a half, maybe even two, and then what happens when it dries is the gourmand elements do come forward a little bit more. It's almost like the, the floral parts melt into the gourmand part, but again, it never becomes overly sweet or cloying or just chokingly horrible that gourmands can be sometimes, for me especially. <laughs> But what happens here is, it's almost like everything mingles together and the vanilla becomes more prominent, but again, it's not too sickly. And you're left with a, just a really nice white floral cream kind of smell. It's here. The vanilla is much more prominent here. The cream is, I love what they've done with this cream accord. I don't know how they do it, but I really like it. And I think it's nice. What I will say is, I'll say this because I do think the price should be lower, but I think if you are trying to get into Amouage as a brand, this line might not be the way to go because their other stuff is far removed. They do have other tube roses though, having said that, which I think are better, like Uber and Honor. This one's like the friendly gateway into Amouage tube roses. On the flip side of that, I would say if you want to get into tube rose fragrances, this might not be a good place to start as a big splash, you know, an out, what was the word? Splashing out or treating yourself to a really expensive fragrance. There are other tube roses you can explore. I have done videos on white florals, which if you care to go and look, I will post a link in the corners. But I think it's cool. I wouldn't buy this one at all, but I'm definitely appreciative that I got to try it and have this decant from Peter, so thank you. So yeah, mainly white florals, gardenia tuberose, a bit of greenery that descends into Chantilly cream, whipped cream, vanilla, without being too sweet. It's a relatively simple development, and um, yeah, that's all I can say about the way it smells. Longevity, it sticks on. With Amouage, for the most part, you're gonna get a good longevity out of them. It just depends on the fragrance. They have reformulated pretty much all of their fragrances, the older ones, for sure. This is new, though, so this is the one formulation that I've smelled. They've not changed it since. It only came out a year ago, so who knows? But to me, this stays on for eight to 10 hours. It's, it stays, it's a good one. But you just, you end up in a much more gourmand place. And that's all I'm going to say about this fragrance. I hope you guys like this video. I'm Ouch from Mono, trying to make the world smell better, one video at a time. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.